The following is a tutorial on FLIR's Research IR standard software that comes included with FLIR's thermal benchtop test kits. Let's start by getting connected to the camera. I simply go to Camera, Select, and it finds all the infrared cameras from FLIR that are currently connected to my computer. In this case, the A65SC, which is part of the A65SC thermal benchtop test kit. I just select the camera and then click Connect. In a few moments, I'll get a nice, beautiful IR image that shows up. There we go. Anywhere I move my cursor, I can get a temperature value per pixel. Let's go ahead and do some image enhancement to make the image look a little bit better. We'll go to View, Palette, and I can choose from any number of color palettes to apply. I personally kind of like this 1, 2, 3, 4 palette, so I'll click on that. We can see the hot spots on the board and probe around and measure some temperatures. Well, let's say that I'm only interested in the temperatures on the board and not here in the background. I can go down and adjust the level and span by typing in a specific temperature range here, or I can just grab the handle on the left-hand side and bring up the bottom end. And on the top, for the top end, I just grab the handle on the right-hand side and I can squeeze that in as well. If I click in the middle, I can adjust the level as well. So this is how I adjust the level and span uh, of how the color palette is being applied to the data. Now, the nice thing is, even though I'm not showing any colors, I'm still getting temperature values per pixel. So all this does is just change the color palette and how it looks on the screen to my eyeball, but doesn't affect the source data underneath. Today, I'm just gonna go uh, use the from image, which is an auto scale and let everything auto scale. Well, today I'm looking at a printed circuit board and what we're gonna do is cool it down and record a movie as it heats up, perform some analysis and then uh, share the data and shows different ways to export it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna turn off the printed circuit board. You'll see it cool down here. And while that's happening, let's go ahead and edit our record settings to tell Research IR exactly how we wanna record the data. To do this, I just go up here to the top and there's an icon I hover over and I have a few different options. And the one here on the far right is edit record settings. So I'll click on that and I have two different record modes available to me with Research IR standard. I can record to disk or disk periodically. Let's take a look at record to disk periodically. Think of this more like a data logger. I specify a certain number of frames to record for a certain duration. Maybe it's a, a certain number of seconds or minutes. Then I can choose whether I want to stop after a certain number of frames are required or just when I push the stop button. I can also go in and say how I want to save the data. Do I want to save each of the images to its own unique image file? Or do I want to save them all into one can, uh, movie file that's simple to, to grab on its own? I also have record to disk as an option, and that's the one I'm going to use today. Here I can specify the number of frames to record or a certain time duration, and I've set it up to record for 10 seconds. The third option here is I can just push a start button to start recording, a stop button to stop recording, which is nice as well. Let's just record for 10 seconds today. I have a few other options down here under record options. I can display images while recording, which means I may or may not drop frames. Um, and so I can choose whether to check that box or not. If I leave it unchecked, it's gonna freeze the image on the screen so I can maximize computer resources to record the data uh, rather than displaying it. Today, I'm gonna leave that unchecked. I have a few other options here uh, that you can learn more about in other research IR tutorials, but um, let's go ahead and just give this movie a name. I've called it A65SC Benchtop Test Kit. It has a prefix of REC and then a counter that'll increment with each file that I record. So the first one's gonna be zero and then one and so forth. I also have naming options if I wanna do a single snapshot and I can include those here too as well. Today I'm just gonna record a movie. So it looks like we're all set. We're gonna record for 10 seconds and the recording name's gonna be REC A65 SC Benchtop Test Kit and then uh, the counter is gonna start at zero. So I'll click OK. We see our boards uh, cool down relatively uh, cooler than it was before. So now we just need to hit the record button. So up here in the options, I'll see that I can pause the image, record a snapshot, and, and there's the record movie, the, the nice red circle. So I'll click record and then turn on the board. Now again, remember I had chosen not to display images while I was recording, so we're not going to see any update on the screen while this records, but here after about 10 seconds, uh, it'll finish the recording, and we'll see the, the resultant frame live now. There it is, and the board heated up that much while we uh, were recording. The recording is down here and I've already set the directory. So let's just double click on the file and here it is playing back and we see it heat up pretty quickly. I have a lot of playback uh, options here for me. 
I can go to a specific frame. I can grab the handle and kind of move along here and uh, manually move between frames by dragging left or right. I can fast forward or play forward or backwards, and I can even go one frame at a time by clicking one of these arrows here at the end. Let's add some analysis tools. Now we saw earlier that anywhere we move our mouse, we get a temperature value per pixel. We can also add a box, circle, line, single pixel spot, or a three by three uh, pixel spot. Uh, I like this three by three pixel. It's kind of easy to grab. So I'm going to put that kind of maybe right there in the middle of this hot chip. And I'm going to grab a box and maybe I'll add that around here so I can see that box. And then I'll uh, grab a line profile as well. And maybe I'll throw that on this, uh, maybe a diode or a resistor up here and kind of put that across there. Let's take a look at the different analysis tools available, uh, charts and graphs. So right now I have the line selected. So I'll go up here in the top left-hand corner and I have the option to display a statistics viewer, a line profile plot, a time versus temperature plot. Uh, let's grab the line profile plot since we have the line. And if I click and drag it off of there, you'll see that it's kind of stuck onto my mouse cursor as long as I'm holding the mouse button down. Now, if I move my cursor over these boxes here, I can either dock it to the right or below the image. In this case, I'm going to dock it to the right of the image, and now it becomes part of the main window. And I can slide this left or right to see more of my image or more of my line profile chart. Let's click on the cursor now. And um, I tell you what, this would be a good time to bring up the statistics viewer. So in this case, I'm going to click on that. It automatically threw it here in the, the container. So now I have a tab view where I can see the line profile or the stats. If I want to see both simultaneously, I just click and drag that off of there and I can dock it on top, below, right, or left of that. Let's put it, uh, let's put it on top. So now I see that here. And uh, now let's go ahead and click on the box here. It's green, so it kind of blends in there. If I right click, I can go in and change the properties of it. So let's say we want to change the properties and give it a different color. Maybe I'll make it a purple and I could give it a unique name as well. This is a good part too to also show you can create local emissivities. So one of the things about IR is you want to always have the correct emissivity entered. And if I happen to have a board like this with uh, different objects with different emissivities, I can create a local emissivity just by clicking on the emissivity and typing in a new value. Now, if per chance I don't happen to know the emissivity, I can calculate it here in Research IR. So I just uh, heat my board to a known temperature, um, and then I can type that in here. So let's say, for example, uh, the infrared camera is measuring 31.7C, but the real reality is it's really 33C. I would calculate, and the emissivity should be 0.876, and I could then use that new emissivity. Uh, today, I'm going to leave everything kind of as the default, um, so I'll uncheck that. But I do want to change the color so I can see it a little better. Uh, now that we have the box selected, let's do a time versus temperature plot. So I'm going to grab that. And in this case, I'm actually going to dock it uh, below the stats. So now I can have three different items here showing up. And to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to click on that cursor again. I'm going to add that as well to the temporal plot. So I just drag it over and you'll see the little addition sign. So now both of those will be charted out there. So let's uh, jump back to the beginning and start playing through some of the data. Over here, I have some object parameters I can adjust, but I'm not going to be working with those right now. So I'm going to hide that, that section so I can get more screen real estate. And what's fun is we see that nice uh, rise in temperature over time. I'll go ahead and click stop, but you can see the two different uh, options there. So now we've shown you some simple analysis uh, available to you in the software. Let's see how to share data, because a lot of times you don't want to share this with colleagues or maybe even customers or export export into a third party uh, software program. So at any point I can uh, right click on any of these different analysis tools and export as a comma separated value uh, file, uh, basically an Excel file, or I can hover over my chart here and you'll see two little arrows show up and I can save this as a bitmap. So if I wanted to put it right into a PowerPoint or maybe into a Word document, or I can export it as a comma separated value field file. So I can export that out. And then I also have an option here to log the data set directly to a text file. So maybe I'm looking at live data and I can be data logging this uh, in real time. But I'll go back and, and go up to file export and look at some of the ability to export the entire image. 
Um, so if I choose the current image, or maybe I want to export the entire movie, let's take a look at the movie. I can export it as a Windows Media video file. So now I have a really nice uh, color infrared movie that I can share with people, and they don't have to have the software to be able to see what's going on there. Uh, really nice, intuitive way to, to share that data. Or I can choose current image, and of course there's the common separated value file we've been talking a lot about. But there's also bitmap, PNG, and JPEGs. Uh, if I choose a JPEG, I can even choose the uh, compression quality and, and some other items here. But the key thing is I just want to choose where I want to record it, uh, save that file off to, and a few other options, and then I just hit export. So great ways to share data with Research IR Standard. If you have any further questions or want more information on specific features, uh, we do cover that in the Research IR tutorials. I encourage you to check those out online or contact FLIR for more information. Thank you.